Hello and welcome to this new revised version of my series on Python for DH where we have zoomed in text and we engage more closely with uh, pythonhumanities.com. In this video, we're going to be looking at something a little different. In the last video, we looked at functions. We talked about how they were kind of the backbone of your code and why you should really kind of use functions to have polished, cleaned up code. In this video, we're going to be looking at uh, something different. We're going to be looking at classes. And if you don't know what a class is, by the end of the video, you will know what they are, why you want to use them, and most importantly, when to use them. So what is a class? Well, a class is simply a way to structure data in Python and perform customized functions on that data. So the best way to really kind of understand this is to just start making a class and showing you how it works. Uh, how it works. And I recommend watching this video all the way through before rewatching it and then going back and trying to do the tasks. Because as you do the tasks, it'll make a lot more sense why you're doing them. It's really the best way, I think, to kind of teach classes because they're a little complicated. So what is a class? Well, a class is created in Python by saying class and giving that class a name. So let's say emperor. And we hit colon, just like we did before, and we hit enter. And if you look, you'll notice that my syntax syntax coloring has changed. We got class in purple, and we got emperor in yellow. Yellow is going to be our class name. So how do we do this? Well, we first need to create, this is always the case for classes, a function that is going to be def init with two underscores before and after. This is always how you're going to structure your first part of your class because this is going to be the first thing that runs when a class is called. Again, this will make a lot more sense when we start calling our class in just a few minutes. So the first thing that you always have to pass when you create this init function is self. This is going to be the thing that's referencing to itself as we go through and talk about um, the class down below in, this, in the middle of this function. So we're going to pass self. Now, at this point, we can do a bunch of kind of cool stuff. We can pass other arguments. I'm going to be doing name, birth, Quran, and death, because we're going to be dealing with emperor-based data. I'm going to zoom out just a little bit. There we go. So what we're going to do is we're going to say self.name, and it's going to be equal to name. So what we're going to be doing through all this is structuring the data. So we're going to pass all of this information when we call this class, and we're going to tell it uh, an emperor's name, an emperor's birth, an emperor's coronation, and an emperor's death. And what that's going to do is it's going to structure all that data for us in one line of code. So again, this will make more sense in just a second. So we're going to say self.birth uh, is going to be equal to birth, self dot uh, coron, which is going to be the coronation year that an emperor is coronated. We're going to say coron. We're going to say self.death is going to be equal to death. So let's go down here. Let's start calling the function or calling the class. So we're going to say person one is equal to emperor. And we're going to be calling the class by making it uh, representative of that object name, that class name. We're going to say Charlemagne, who is the Frankish king. He's born in 742. He gets coronated, however, as Roman emperor in 800, and he dies in 814. So what we have here are four pieces of data on Charlemagne in one line of code. And we have a way to represent that by passing it through the function and, or sorry, the class emperor and assigning it to all these things. And so our first function is simply going to create and structure all that data for us and create really kind of, and in, in the best way to understand it is as a dictionary. So if I try to print this off, you're going to notice something a little weird. Now you might be thinking to yourself, if I try to print this off, why isn't it just giving me all this metadata? The reason why is because it's printing off a class. And while to our eyes, we see the output down here, underscore main, underscore emperor, object at we see the hash right here. Well, this doesn't make any sense to us and makes perfect sense to a machine. To a machine, this means that it's a class and all that gibberish there is all of this information here. So how do we actually get that stuff converted into something that we can read and work with in our program? 
Well, the way in which we do that, we got two different options. Option one is we can say bars. Actually, let me do this separately so you can kind of see it, what's happening. We can say vars p1. So we're going to print off that object. And what vars is going to do, you'll see, it's going to convert it into a dictionary for us. And now you have data structured as a dictionary. And I always do this for people who are learning Python because it's really the best way to, to demonstrate what is happening in a class. A class is, in this first init function, is structuring the data in its own way, but really it's structuring it kind of as a dictionary. It's making one value or one key, so name, equal to a specific value, Charlemagne, that, that the actual name that corresponds to it, the key of birth equivalent to 742, the year. So that's how you can do that. Another way is you can print off P1 and you can do dot underscore dict, D-I-C-T, and underscore underscore again. And you'll notice that we have the exact same thing. We're converting it to a dictionary. Uh, this is the way that people used to do it. And I believe this is the way people do it now. Really, both are fine. They're both going to work for you. But make sure that you do uh, one or the other. And be consistent in your code. That's important. So that's what a class does on a very, very basic level. It gives you a way to consistently structure data. So were I to want to copy and paste this a bunch of times, I could say P2, P3, I could change this to Louis, and we're going to say 778. And for that, that's going to be his birth year, his, cor uh, his uh, coronation year is 813, and his death year is 840. For P3, we're going to say Lothar, fun name, I know. Uh, we're going to say 795, and we're going to say that he was coronated in 817. And we're going to say that he dies in 855. And I know that these coronation years overlap because that's how they did it. They trained their sons on the job. Okay, so now we can do this kind of same thing with P2. Let's demonstrate this for you. You could print that off and you see that it works just fine. Do the same thing with P3. Just as a little test, you see that it all looks nice and fine and dandy. Wonderful. Okay, so why is this useful? Well, within the class, we can pass certain functions that are class specific. So let's create another function within the class. And if you notice, all of my functions are indented inside the class. So we're going to say birth date. This is going to be a function that's going to allow us to calculate a birth date. And these functions need to take at least one argument. And they're almost always going to take self. And self is going to be a reference back to the data that you're inputting. This is self. It's all this information. So what we're going to say in here is we are going to print off. We're going to do an f string, formatted string, and we're going to say self.name. This is what's known as a method. We are, uh, we are calling a class-specific method, and we are referencing it. So self.name is going to give us the, whatever name we're looking at was born in, we're going to say self.birth. Okay, fantastic. We got like a nice simple thing. What this is going to do, it's going to take that name and tell us the year that they were born so we don't have to just read a dictionary. Now, if I want to print off and call that function, I can simply do something like this, p1.birthdate, and it's going to run that method, that specific function. And you do it just like that. You run it, and you'll see that we get Charlemagne down here printed off. Fantastic. Now we can do some pretty cool stuff. We can say that Charlemagne was born in, and we can say self.birth. And now when we run it, it prints off that. That's all that function does. Not a very complex function, but one nonetheless. And again, it's class specific, which looks eh, classes make your code look cleaner and more structured. So let's do a, another one. Uh, we can do def, let's do, call this one pros. We're gonna pass in the argument of just self. We're gonna do something different in just a second, I promise. And we're gonna print off f, again, we're gonna do that formatted string, self.name. And we're gonna say was emperor from self.corn until his death 
in self self dot def and then we can do go down here and change this down leave that right there p1 dot pros and then pass that and we can see that we now have this right here so this gives you a way to structure really nice formatted strings and print them off but again you're not limited to just that you can do other things as well so let's do one more kind of formatted string uh, but we're going to do something a little more complicated we're going to do a compare one and this one's going to take two arguments it's going to be self once again and we're going to say uh other and we are going to do print and you'll see what i'm doing here in just a second f string self dot name died and so dot death but a dot name sorry other dot name uh was emperor n other dot coron this means uh what do i want to say this means that they ruled together that they ruled together for we're going to say self dot death minus other dot coron okay and we're going to say years put it like that so we can kind of account for everything so what this is going to do is this is going to take two arguments so let's go out down here and i'm going to get rid of some of this just so you can kind of see what's happening better so we're going to say again p1 dot compare but we have to pass in another argument and I'm going to pass in P2. So what we're going to see is uh, if P2 is overlapped at all with P1, which is father and son. And let's simply print this off. And you see that we're able to pass a whole class into another class's functions. And the class is able to interpret it because they have the same structure. So what we have here is Charlemagne died in 814, but his... But Louis was emperor in 813. This means, and again, I just had a simple typo. This means that they ruled together for one years. And you can do this with uh, P2 and P3 as well. Louis died in 840, but Lothar. And you can see what's happening here. The classes give you a great way to structure data, a great way to have uh, class-specific functions so that you can call those functions uh, and really kind of make your code look really clean, really tight, and really neat. That's the that's how classes work on a very basic level. I didn't cover go into them in too much detail right now because I really wanted to just have you focus on uh, the key concepts and how to create a class. Spend time with this. Spend time with creating a class that does something specific to your data and just get comfortable with how you create them. In the next videos and in this series and in other series that I do, we're going to be working with classes a lot more in depth and a lot more uh, in a lot more complicated ways. But because classes are a little difficult to wrap your head around, I just want you to focus on just the basics right now on how you structure a class, how you create functions within a class, and try to start off with what I have here and tweak it to your own specific data. That's the best thing I can tell you uh, for getting used to classes. It's kind of how I got used to them. And if you go to pythonhumanities.com, you will see, oh, that's nice. Google today. It's a little slow right now for some reason, my internet. Go to pythonhumanities.com. Go down to the last tutorial in part three, which is lesson 11, corresponding to this video. And you'll see we've got kind of the same stuff right here, a little different. I've copied and pasted a lot of the code in so that you can kind of just fiddle with it on the actual website. So go ahead and play around with it. And if you notice, I probably have one thing different. I've changed uh, uh, A to other in this video. But go ahead and play with it and then read down here and it'll explain a lot of what's happening. So if you're familiar with dictionaries, you should already be uh, familiar with how a class is going to structure data in this init function. Just get comfortable with it. And when you want to hit run and you can see that you can actually run your code. That's going to be it for this video, though. Thank you for listening. If you've enjoyed it, please like and subscribe down below. Thank you for watching this video. If you've enjoyed it, please like and subscribe down below and visit us at pythonhumanities.com.